Hello and welcome to a rather wet and cold Whitney Rugby Club, host tonight to the first inter-services under-23 match of the season. We're going to have all three for you live over the next few weeks, but tonight we've got challengers in the RAF and champions in the British Army, a match that could go a long way in deciding the title, just like it did last year. So last year, the Army won the title. Now the pressure's on them to retain it. Let's get a word with both camps, shall we? Both head coaches, starting with the RAF. So we're here with the RAF under-23s head coach, Flight Lieutenant James Henriette, which I've got right. And a big game tonight. Yeah. Uh, what, how are the boys prepared for this? Uh, the boys have been doing really well. Um, we've had a good training camp and a good period uh, build up to this. Unfortunately, with the death of Her Majesty the Queen, we did lose a few fixtures. Um, we lost some time with the lads, but they've worked really hard both on the pitch when they come and see me and the coaches um, and off the field with our sort of team management ops pillar side, really trying to work in. We've got a lot of new lads here with us in the under 23s, and it's a big opportunity for them tonight. Not just new players, this is your first season in charge of the team as well. Looking to make an impact, I suppose, especially against the champions. Yeah, I mean, the army always pose a, a big threat. Um, IS is really built up and it's a big target for the lads this year. I think for me, we're, we're simply looking to push lads forward, get them developed at a young age so they can buy into RAF rugby and the brand and the style that we want to play in and hand them over to uh, Justin Coleman in the first team. Now, the weather isn't, uh, it was typical British weather, let's say, tonight. Is that, how is that going to go into your game plan? Hey, look, we, we can't control the weather, um, and it, it was always going to be like this. Uh, it's a November game, it's under the lights, which is a really nice atmosphere down here at Whitney. It's going to be wet, it's going to be slippery, but the boys are prepared for it. They know what to do, they know how they want to play, and it's down to them to now go and execute. Matthew, thank you very much, good luck. So in your director role tonight, we are expecting a very good match. The weather isn't um, necessarily on the players' side, but it could make it a bit more exciting. What are you expecting? Well, always a tough game. It's an inserted game. Uh, I'm sure both teams, uh, with the way the academies are run, have a, have a decent turnover of players. So there's a lot of uh, fresh players, new caps on both teams. So that will add to the sort of emotion, uh, a bit of nervousness perhaps. Uh, yeah, and a weather like this always makes for a bit of a leveller. Um, the facilities here are excellent. I said the pitch is, is well drained and, and good. So uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah, if the weather holds like this, it might be OK. But uh, either way, it'll be a competitive, uh, enthralling match, I'm sure. I'm sure in your senior army role, you'll be keeping an eye on some of these players, seeing if they can knock on the door a little bit. Well, yeah, I, I don't know. You have to ask the boys whether that's added a bit of spice to proceedings or not. I mean, I'm absolutely delighted to, to take over from uh, Mal Roberts' uh, fantastic legacy. And, yeah, it means I've got a, a, an immediate insight into uh, the youth coming through. And uh, these guys have always got an opportunity to stick their hand up to, to apply for senior representative honours as well. Well, I know we are going to hear more from that from you at halftime, so we won't touch on that too much. But finally, just on tonight's game, the Army come into it as reigning champions. Any extra pressure on that? I don't know. I, I, I guess so, because we won it last year, and I'm sure the, the Royal Air Force will be, be dead set on trying to turn us over at their home ground. We had a fantastic game against them last year. They were very, very uh, strong. Um, you, know, you could argue we were quite lucky to, to pit them with the final play of the game, I think, to, to, win, the, um, to win that match in the inner services. So there isn't much between any of the teams, really, at this level. Uh, and as I said, with the, the turnover of players, every new fixture is almost, um, almost a, a starting again process. So we'll, let's see what happens. And we'll back ourselves. The boys have trained really hard. Uh, we've had the best benefit of an extra year on top of uh, the two-year break post-COVID, so um, we, we might have a more, more breadth and depth in our squad, if not perhaps some of the superstars that may have emerged out of last year. So we'll see. It's game on. I'm looking forward to it. Perfect. Thank you very much. Perfect. Two head coaches there expecting the best from their players on the pitch tonight, so it's time to let the talking stop and the action to start. We're going to join our commentary team now. We're very pleased to say, joining us for analysis and the co-commentator role, we have a UCAF forwards coach, but more importantly, the RAF senior head coach, Justin Coleman. He's with Calf Brazier. 
Thanks, Carl. And as Carl alluded to, a very wet welcome here from Whitney Rugby Club. Um, true old school rugby weather um, as the players come out here for this RAF under 23 and Army under 23 clash. This, of course, last year, as um, you will have seen on the VT preceding these events, the Army got it with a last minute try and won 31 28. So an exciting fixture that we saw last year. Let's hope they can follow up with some more entertainment this year. I just want to take a chance to to, um, introduce my co-coms today. Um, Justin Coleman, normally either with UCAF Rugby or with the senior, um, senior setup here for RAF, but this must be really good breeding ground for you to see what's coming up and coming in the whole military ranks. Uh, yeah, definitely, Kath. It's great for both services to see some of the under-23 players in action. Um, we saw from last year that the, those players with good performances here uh, go on to represent senior teams into the services next year. Um, and, you know, you come here with a sort of coach's hat on and you're in your suit. I mean, you're not the best dressed. You've got an umbrella, which is great. But, um, you know, your life is rugby, military rugby. So, you know, you'll give us a good insight into what we're seeing out there today. Yeah, hopefully there may not be too much uh, fun flowing fast place <laughs> rugby with the conditions that we've got. But um, it's going to be a good physical battle as uh, every service game is. We're just waiting as the teams are going to be introduced, I think, here to sort of the dignitaries. We've got a few big names here tonight um, from within the military. Um, and just to say, um, in the pre-coms to this, we did an interview briefly with um, Lieutenant Colonel Tim Osman, of course, who's just taken over. I, think, I believe it's the, the interim Army senior coach, your position, you know, opposite position with the Army. But he's also um, the sort of director of rugby for under-23 rugby as well. So it's obviously a small-knit group, isn't it? A lot of you sort of doing the similar jobs. Yeah, we've... Um done battle uh, through various levels and we get on well from a coaching group with the Army and Navy guys uh, and a lot of us similar to myself have come through coaching the under 23s and I know Mal Roberts who's recently yeah. stepped down uh, has done the same thing so it's good to see that the Army are promoting their guys and they're, they're coming through the system It'll be great to see as well. We always get, we are of course live tonight on um, Forces News uh, Facebook and YouTube and the BFBS Sport 2 via the player for our overseas audiences. So it's really important to remember that family and friends and all the military we have abroad will be watching this, you know, because a lot of these guys and girls who play at this level of rugby, well, that will be their future, you know, being abroad and posted abroad. Uh, yeah, it's great for, uh, for everyone from their trades, regiments, etc., regardless of service, um, for those guys to go out and put on a good performance and represent tonight. I just, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to laugh, and I think I think the rain is set in for the evening. We had we had a couple of big downpours just before um, we came live on here. The rain now is is that kind of rain that's just going to stick around, isn't it? It's not a big heavy shower. It's just drizzle, heavy drizzle for probably the next two hours. Yeah, there, there's a fair breeze, uh, <laughs> and I think it's going to affect set piece specifically for tonight. Uh, the pick and go game with the forwards is going to be strong, uh, and just see how the pitch holds out for 80 minutes. Um, does this bring back memories of your playing days you know uh, they were uh, quite a while ago um, <laughs> to be honest the last time it was the under 21s when, when I played for the RAF side of it but um, it was only maybe five six years ago that I coached the under 23s before transitioning to the senior 15 so I know there's a lot of work gone on beyond the scenes with huge changes for the RAF under 23s from a coaching and playing perspective uh, and, and the army are, are quite settled but we'll have a, a new batch of players ready to go to into, into action tonight I was laughing, I am laughing at the, um, just to explain anyone who, who won't be able to see our press gantry for tonight, but we are about sort of 12 foot up, um, looking out on a lovely club ground that Whitney has here. Floodlights are brilliant, the clubhouse is excellent. We're not undercover, but I suppose I shouldn't complain when you look at the next three weeks of matches, you know, the, the venues and facilities are pretty good. And we look back to obviously UCAF being held at um, King's Home last week as well. Yeah, a little bit different to uh, King's Home where I was last <laughs> Wednesday night. Um, but well, You were wet then as well, weren't you? Uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't too bad, to be fair. We were quite fairly well covered. Um, but Whitney is a great club with good links to RAF Bryce Norton uh, with a few players coming from there. And they've uh, done some great work with it with a new clubhouse as well uh, since we were here this time last year against the Navy. And, of course, Director of Rugby, UCAF Rugby, is Tug Wilson. He has, you know, links here at Whitney, and I guess that's how it's come about. Uh, I think that may have been. Uh, also, the former head coach, Richie Craig, um, was, was based at Whitney as well uh, and had a uh, stint uh, within the coaching setup. So um, those links obviously um, paid off.
do have a full clubhouse here tonight and you hopefully will have heard that on um, the national anthem and just while we've got um five minutes uh, well a few minutes before kickoff you know still here at a wet whitney let's go to the raf and army lineups i'm just going to read one to 15 jc if you've um what i'll do is i'll stop after i've done the raf lineup if you can sort of name any players now that should be significantly watching so from one to 15 for the raf we've got dylan martin josh peacock tam bald dan gilbert finn taylor Connor Roberts, Ben Collins and Lewis Boland, um, that's in the forward pack. Yeah, uh, Tom Bolt uh, has gone to Barry St Edmunds uh, as a big ball carrier, uh, number three uh, and there's some strong positions at uh, number eight as well um, so physically they should set up um, Ben Collins has been really key uh, for the under-23s, and I worked with him earlier in the summer. Um, so, again, he, he doesn't look like he's carrying a lot of timber, but he, he can certainly hit hard and will make some tackles today. OK, and in the back um, backs, we've got Jordan Bedford, Harry Sainton, Kieran Prescott, Keir McDougall, Kareth Jenkins, Ollie Ruffle and Lewis Bovington. But um, let's... We'll try and name the Army team while we can during the match, but let's wait for kickoff here as the RAF under-23 cook off against Army under-23 here at Whitney Rugby Club. I want to wait for kickoff, JC, but, you know, young as they are, and probably you more used to sort of 4G pitches around the country, they, they are going to enjoy this um, this run out on an old-fashioned rugby pitch. Yeah, it's a great opportunity for a first in the service game. OK, so... Apologies if um, we're a bit slow on the commentary, trying to see things in this weather. Um, but that is an RAF put in, I believe, JC here. Yeah, it was a knock on by the army, hot off kick off. So, first physical test for both sides at scrum time to see what they can do. This is always interesting, that first scrum as well, isn't it, for, of a match? Yeah, it's, it's a great mental battle to try and get one up on your opposite number at this time. So, Jordan Bedford there putting it in, will be putting it in at scrum half. It's good field position for the RAF if they can get something from this and uh, test the army defences early on. Yeah. So RAF under 23 here at Whitney Rubber Club for the first of this inter-services clash with Jordan Bedford putting in. Oh, this comes down again. So is that the RAF bringing it down because that is army ball now? I, th I think it was a foot issue with the break, uh, with the break foot of the hooker. Uh, this was only a free kick to the army. OK, so the Army, apart from that knock-off, get um, the first touch of the ball and they'll be running it. Um, I know it won't be a running game, JC, purely because of the conditions, but there are a lot of Fijian names in that Army lineup, so they may try and run it out right, wide if they can. Yeah, they'll be, they'll be bringing a lot of physicality as well, I'm sure. Uh, well, they just started that with the <laughs> Fijian winger coming straight in. It's marginally um, late, but... <laughs> Tex, uh, Tex covered two there, making his intentions clear early on. But um, the RAF on the back foot here as the Army take the ball forward. And that's in touch. That's a lovely kick. So, first line out. Um, another interesting test is... Uh, as we see the beginnings of this under-23 clash. And it's uh, the hooker for the army, and many apologies if I get these names wrong, is Andre Yosef Romero, Royal Engineers Lance Corporal. So he'll be putting the ball in for the Reds. Nice, neat take. That's slippery conditions, not going to help, but saved by the army. Infringement there by the RAF Cath. I'm not sure the ref hasn't signalled yet, but he's given the penalty. OK, so we could see the first points on the board if they decide to go for goal here.
Yeah, I believe they are, because... Uh... Yeah, the RAF really can't look to concede penalties uh, around their 22, depending on the ability of the kicker, but this could be some early points for the Army to start the game off. So, Army uh, fly half is Chris Hubbersty. He'll be taking this first penalty kick. Well, not in front of the post, but I would say that's a good one that you get 9 out of 10 in, in training. Yeah, it, it should be kickable. It just depends. The wind has died down for the minute, uh, but the conditions aren't going to help. So we're still scoreless here at Whitney Rugby Club. Um, but Hubbersty here with a chance to put three points on the board for the men in red, the army. And he skews it just slightly left. So we're still nil all here at Whitney. Um, that could have been something to do with the rain. It's slippery to take a ball, take a kick, isn't it? Yeah, it didn't move much, whether the wind just died and he uh, over-anticipated it a little bit, but that's a uh, saving grace for the Air Force uh, with, a, with a penalty that they didn't need to concede early on. And do you think penalties in this instance will be inexperienced, or do you think they've had enough time together to sort of iron that bit out of their game? Uh, I, I think with any inter-services game, the first 10, 15 minutes is always a little bit chaotic. Absolutely. Uh, once the game's settled down a little bit and the, uh, the emotions from the anthems and representing mm. your Air Force or Army are, are out of it and you can start focusing on the game. And for many, this will be the first time they've represented. These guys are young. Yeah, definitely with, the, with an inter-services game, this will be, I think, a first cap. There's not many that are still around from last year, so a uh, big test for them mentally to, to get over that and focus on their own individual performance. OK, so scrum here at, um, at Winnie, and the Army will be putting the ball in. So Kevin Vander, at least, on scrum half for the Army with that responsibility. And the ball's out, and so the army using it, using it out wide. But successfully defended there by the RAF, but it's still army ball. They've got a lot of room here out on the right wing. In fact, I've got text cover two here calling for it on the right wing, but it's gone the other way. Hubbersty there kicking it forward. Oh, I think that was a knock-on by the RAF. Yeah, that's going to go against them. Right near the army line. Yeah, not the best place to do it. But again, the uh, conditions yeah, coming into slippery. play there, making it difficult for Bob, I think, at 15 um, to get hold of that ball. Again, nerves, but I cannot tell you how wet this rain is. I know that sounds silly. Rain is always wet. But you know when it's really wet and you just feel soaked through in five minutes? Yeah, I certainly know the feeling <laughs> on top of the gantry. <laughs> I think we're... Uh, with no possibility of drying out at half-time, this could be interesting. So another army put in here, and they are literally about five metres from their own line. Um, well, from the try line, anyway. And the scrum's gone down again. That was a good nudge by the RAF early on there. I had um, Josh Peacock, um, obviously the hooker for the RAF under 23. I've got him starred on here, just as sort of a star of the future, someone to look out for in this game. Yeah, he's only 19 years old, so he, he's got a lot of pro progression uh, and time on his side, but he's got a good pedigree, I believe, from Sale Academy. Uh, and after watching them train the other week, um, he's got huge potential to go well. So as the army put in again to the scrum, and I would say only five metres from the try line. That's so, a great shove yeah, by the RAF very scrum. Good they took them back many many meters there but still army ball and i'll look to get it out wide you've got cover two here on the right wing but it's been dropped but hasn't gone forward so they'll stick with it and the army just need to oh the rain is just making it so difficult it's just slipping out of people's hands, isn't it? Yeah, they're maybe trying to overplay a little bit and not manage the conditions as, as, as good as they could do, but it's a promising defensive set from the RAF. That's true. Uh, and scrum time to get that nudge on. Uh, looks promising for the rest of the game, whether that was just a, 
lapse in concentration from the army or just pure physical dominance from the RAF. But um, there's positive signs for them if they can get out of this Absolutely. area. Absolutely. I mean, they pushed them another, you know, four or five metres back, didn't they? So. OK, so the RAF have survived that early scare there and um, they are back in possession and um, putting ball and it will be um, Jordan Bedford again putting the ball into the scrum for the RAF. And that is a strong push. They have got definitely seem to have dominance there in the front row. And it's heading our way, but yeah, you can really see the wind. <laughs> the wind affected that one. Yeah, it's going to be difficult uh, for both sides this evening, sort of a leveller. It feels very old school, though. It feels like what I grew up watching rugby, not that I played it myself, but... This is what it used to be, again, before 4G pitches and what have you. Yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely grassroots from, <laughs> from club all the way through, but uh, it's, it's great for the youngsters to, to be here uh, and share this location, really. And just those memories for your first in the services fixture last forever. Yusuf Romero again with fairly straightforward line out of the army. They didn't even need any, any jumping, so they maintain possession of the ball. And it'll be fed out the back. I'm pretty sure by half time these players are all going to be the same colour as well. Oh, nearly a very, very lovely interception by RAF, but um, not forward in the end. It, it, it strikes me watching, the, I say the modern game in the last of 10 years, that the passing is very close. There's, it seems a lot closer than it used to be. There seem to be a lot more chances for knock-ons and kind of or deliberate knock-ons or interceptions. And it's just the way that rugby play, rugby's played now, sort of closer on the edge, isn't it? Yeah, there's a lot of emphasis on uh, line speed and uh, yeah. defensive systems, so the guys will generally try and close that space as quick as possible to force an error. Okay, so another army put in, and they've made RF made a bit of ground, but um, army back in possession. But there, yeah, that scrum is is very strong from the light blues. But the army come out with the ball that time. And it looks like, yeah, seems to have a prefer to go to the left, even though there's quite a lot of space over here on the right, and the winger is calling for it. But he's gone for the kick forward. Let's see if uh, they've got the speed. But great take there. So RAF um, wing there, I think that's Ollie Reffel, who's almost playing a fullback position at the moment. Yeah, penalty for the army after the attacker not releasing from the RAF side of things, so another opportunity oh, for three points for the you. army. Okay. So Chris Hoversty, uh, vice captain of this under 23 side, um, and he is a Rumi Lance Corporal with his second chance to put the army ahead by three points here in this first inter-services matchup between the RAF and the army under 23. Um, he just cooked it left on the last one, so this one slightly more straight onto the posts. Has it got the distance? No, unfortunately not. That was just short, so it's still nil-nil here at Whitney between the RAF and army under 23 sides. One thing about this country, JC, great view of this little setup here. <laughs> this yeah, is the best yeah I, I can't fault the view. Uh, <laughs> it, it's good to see we should uh, get plenty of action both sides from up here at least. Um, but good defensive set. This will be frustrating for the army that they're not coming away with points when they're getting into that 22. So yeah. um, hopefully we can uh, get some RAF possession shortly. Okay, so the last line out went straight to um, the second row, but this one. As slightly more conventional, and yeah, the army have got some space out there on the left. Some good speed there from Marley yeah. Wolfenden. Yeah, the RAF not competing at line out time for the last three, uh, considering the conditions. Uh, they need to start getting off at the front and spoiling as much as they can. That won't be a conscious decision not to compete and just let play on. They they really need to compete, don't they? Yeah, I think so. Just judging by the conditions, mm. um, it's going to be difficult to hit anything towards the middle or tail ball. So uh, competition at the front is key for them, really. So again, we've got... Um, is it another scrum or is that a penalty to the goal? 
Yeah, I think uh, the RF have been pinged again, so penalty counts really hurting them. Uh, the referees asked the captain to have a word with the players, so right. repeated infringements from the RAF side of things. I think these are the little things as a non-rugby player that I don't pick up on, the sort of bits that happen that you sort of off, the, not necessarily off the ball, but the quick decisions that the referees have to make. Um, um, but actually the army, instead of going for the post the time, are going for the corner, so... Yeah, after two misses with the conditions, yeah. um, they, they might try the, the more game a little bit, um, try and test the RAF up front. Oh, and that has not gone far enough, but knock on, oh dear. Yeah, I mean, just calamity to calamity the minute with the... best the, in the world may not have been able to catch that one. No, again, again knock on. Uh, and, and the 10 missing touch. Just, again, the conditions really coming into play, uh, whether it, it shows how bad the, the weather is here or um, it's just the, the stresses of that opening 10, 15 minutes. I mean, I assumed the army were going for corner. I think that's what they're aiming for. But in the end, they've come out with um, a scrum again, only five metres from the try line. So it's a repeat of what happened on the left-hand side of the field about five minutes ago. Um, but army definitely dominating territory and possession so far. Um, the RAF have got a good front line. They've got a good scrum. And they need to make the most of it. So army put in. Yeah, they've definitely got the strength there, JC. Yeah, that's about three or four scrums in a row yeah. now where they show dominance. Okay, there's a lot going on here. And some handbags. <laughs> Ref on the whistle trying to tame the troops there. Bound to happen, I think. I think the RAF will feel, you know, they, I mean, they're responsible for their own mistakes, but there might be some choice words being thrown out there, JC. Yeah, there's a lot of positives uh, defensively at the minute, uh, scrum time and just keeping the army at bay, but uh, we need to start transitioning down the field, uh, get some possession and work through the phases to end up in the army half, really. Um, talking of um, last year, I think Jack Johnson was one of the um, stars of, you know, the army team last year, and he obviously has now made it into the UCAF setup, and that's what these guys can look at. They've been playing under 23 one year and being the UCAF setup the following year. That's quite impressive. Yeah, that, that's quick transition. So two of the stars last year was obviously Jack Johnson, mm -hmm. who's the the Army 10 that, that did really well, and uh, for the Army and the senior and services. Uh, and again, he did pick up a knock last week, so we didn't see as much of him as we'd like. But the same for Will Lamont mm -hmm. from the RAF side of it, who yeah. scored in the fixture last year, uh, and again against uh, Gloucester team at Kingsholm last Wednesday. Okay, so the yeah, we've got Vaughan they'll need to use this. Take it out, that could be heading straight for us. Not quite. Another delight of being on the gantry. And that hit one of the cars. So they've made a few meters here, the light blues, um, and they really need to get the ball back in um, the army's half and uh, use that strength of the front line. But um, you were they haven't been contesting at these line outs, so given that it's na it's their line out, they really should be um, winning these ones. Yeah, we'll go up here. Do we just need a right call, really, to, to hit space and uh, keep possession for a little while. So Josh Peacock with the throw. And that was fingertips to uh, the number seven, but unfortunately taken in by the army and they've got the advantage again lovely tackle there on Jordan Miller it's made some meters but it's still an army that's a penalty so the army penalized this time and the RAF have the ball yeah really good uh, defensive set by the RAF putting the physical hits in uh, forcing the errors and then earning the penalty as well to hopefully get a bit further into our army territory that's yeah, that's gone a little bit further, but unfortunately not made the line. But it has given them some some meters. So the army have shown us they've. Well, I was going to say shown us they've got the skills to pass the ball, but um, they lost at that time. And a few more handbags coming out there on the far side of the field. Um, army ball 
Yeah, it's another penalty. So just after getting into the army half for the first time in a while, they um, have conceded again, uh, which will allow the army the opportunity to clear the lines. Well, we're only 15 minutes here um, in here. Um, no score here at Whitney Rugby Club between the Army and RAF under-23 sides. Um, largely maybe to do with the weather and a bit of nerves, but the first quarter was always going to be um, probably a tough one. So, um, you know, I mean, I want to say it's not going to... Well, you said it's not going to be a running rugby game. It's going to be a lot about the strength of the forwards and keeping the ball. Um, and we don't want to bang on about the conditions, but um, it will make it slightly different. But... Uh, yeah, it's just about adapting your game, really, to, mm -hmm. to be able to play, um, find out what your strengths are, look for any weaknesses in the opposition, and then try and exploit them as much as possible. But uh, the mentality piece is going to be huge for the whole 80 minutes. And obviously, it's, it's not going to be a particularly high-scoring game, I'd imagine. Um, so it, it could be quite close, and kicks and penalties will be key. And as I mentioned before, comms, I think the score last year was 28-31 um, in the Army's favour. That was um, at order shot, I believe. Um, and that was a really good match, except it was, you know, I mean, the RF were in the lead until the dying minutes, but that's the kind of score that, you know, these teams are capable of, but un unlikely in these conditions. Yeah, it's always going to be really competitive. Uh, the RF were unfortunate last year uh, to, to lose last play of the game, so uh, the effect that that can have on the boys, uh, and hopefully some of them were, that may have been around or saw the game uh, will remember that, uh, that it's not over till that, that 18 minute and the whistle goes. Are you still getting a really healthy influx of rugby players into the, the military is it a question of people coming at to play rugby or a question of introducing them into rugby when they when they come in uh, I, I, think, I think it changes and it, it does vary you'll get some guys that, that have joined that have got a good pedigree uh, and some that will start taking up the sport it, with with numbers dwindling a, a, across and, and out of the service as well I think it always gets harder uh, as well as work pressures and, and release and to, to be able to play in their own time as well yeah but the encouraging thing is is that there's, there's a really good relationship now between clubs and the military, isn't it? And I'm not just talking about the elite clubs. I'm talking about, you know, grassroots rugby, places like Whitney, the co contacts that you can get people playing civilian rugby yeah, as well. Yeah, of course. We, we'll try and move guys and encourage that weekend rugby as well. That's, that's where they'll, they'll spend the majority of their time with maybe four or five representative games each year. And that's where they'll be, they'll be coached at a good level and play the majority of their rugby. Um, as we look to the other side of the pitch and um, an RAF put in at the scrum, you might be able to see the numerous umbrellas. But it's quite a good crowd here for a wet Wednesday night in Whitney, isn't it? Yeah, it was last year, considering the conditions. The, the turnout's really good. Uh, the, it's been well supported. Location-wise, it's good for, for a lot of people to get to as well, I, I'd imagine. Bryce Norton's close by, isn't it? All the, um, yeah, we've got a fair few servicemen yeah. there for, for Army and Navy, to be honest. Yeah. So the RAF finally having a run with the ball. And um, their wing keeping hold of it, and they just need to um, keep that safe and yeah, bring it into the bodies because this weather is not going to help anyone. Much better from the RAF, um, keeping the ball, no mistakes, don't get penalties. Potentially, they could use... It's clearing up a little bit, still still raining. But as it clears up, maybe they can uh, see... see the <laughs> doesn't look like it's clearing up, but I promise you, it is. That's wishful thinking, I think. <laughs> I'm, I'm praying and hoping for the best. Justin Kindly has covered me with his umbrella as well, so I'm doing all right. Okay, so unfortunately the RAF yet again have um, lost the ball through a slight bit of indiscipline, even though they look like they want to roll there. Yeah, the ball carrier not releasing uh, the breakdown. So again, um, just, so there's a lot of errors on both sides of the ball, really. Um, but again, it was a good little, a good couple of phases by the RAF uh, and they showed some promise there, uh, but just can't capitalise. Uh, they've just got to be patient when, when we start entering the army half now and just keep possession and build a bit more momentum. I think this is the furthest we've been into, um, you know, opposition's territory. So that could be seen as an advantage. But um, the fact that the army are back in possession um, possibly counteracts that, obviously. Yeah, hopefully they'll get this one out. Uh, we'll go back to a line out to contest. Possibly another front ball option and a bit of a wrestle. So 
Um, the conditions are going to make everything a 50-50 battle, really. So it's worth the RAF getting somebody up if they can at the front. OK, so they will... Um, Army will have a line-out throw here on the crowd side of the pitch. I'm sure there'll be uh, plenty of partisan <laughs> partisan support over there. I'm feeling it's more of an RAF crowd than a, as if a home game for them than an Army crowd. But Yeah, yeah there's a fair few thousand, I think, at Bryce Norton and quite a few have nice. turned out tonight. So Brilliant. Uh, I'd like to think it was a home crowd. OK, but the RAF have stolen that one, so that's a positive at the line-out. Yeah, as, as expected, uh, they've started getting someone off at the front now, which is good to see. Uh, and we've turned the ball over, so hopefully we can uh, exit well from here. Yeah, and the ball's out, and they just, yeah, they're relying on the kicking, I'm assuming, because of the wet conditions. But that probably didn't go as far as they were hoping. But it's being brought back for an earlier infringement. So it'll be an RAF put in. Apologies, RAF. Um, RAF just going to kick it off. Yeah, I think he's awarded a penalty. I'm not quite sure what for. OK. Ordinarily, Justin, I would have a screen up that we could uh, watch, but I'm not risking that with the rain either. No, I don't blame you. He did indicate, so I think it was the, <laughs> the army coming in at the side of that breakdown. So we're about on the halfway line here um, at Whitney, and it's still scoreless here between the Army under-23 and the Royal Air Force under-23 in a match that um, was, was full of tries and running rugby last year, um, but weather and conditions are slightly different. So be prepared for an old-school muddy contest here. hope Whitney has some good baths. Good clean ball for the RAF there, <laughs> considering the conditions, so that's what they can do. Yeah, this, this is promising. Um, Oli Rafael there, um, on the, uh, well, technically on the right wing, wearing number 14. Um, he's definitely got some, I don't know whether it's, he's got some speed on him, he's got wheels in him. But also, he's got that dodging skill, hasn't he? Yeah, there's, there's some quick youngsters they've got in the RAF back line, and certainly Kieran Prescott, uh, who played for the senior RAF Rugby League in the Absolutely, services yeah. as well. Um, he's got a lot of potential and a lot of speed to burn, hopefully. And I believe he's a, a rugby league, not a convert to rugby union, but, but can do both, and he's being used. Yeah, I, I think um, after chatting to Gaz Dunn, the RAF uh, rugby league head coach, mm -hmm. earlier this evening, he's, he's majority a rugby league background, so he's fairly new to, to union, so uh, um, hopefully he'll, he'll cover both codes. Brilliant. OK, so the RAF on a strong run here. Just need to keep the ball. And they're looking slightly more confident about it. And all the R army can do is uh, defend from there, but RAF definitely looking a more joined up lineup than they did in the first 15 minutes. Brilliant. Could that oh, bounce right for him, but uh, had an army player in the right place at the right time. Yeah, it's free ball for the RAF with the referee sending on the penalty, so worth giving it a go to see if it comes off. So back for the penalty here. And the RAF, I assume, you're just going to, yeah, they're going to go for the line, aren't they? Keep going forward. Yeah, maybe back their set piece, try and maul the army over from here if we can get some decent ball at line-out time. For anyone who is watching live, whether that be via the Forces News Facebook, um, our YouTube channel, or on um, BFBS Extra, um, sorry, BFBS on the uh, on the player for our viewers overseas, 
do feel free to get in touch. Um, if you know anyone who's playing, that's often the case. Family and friends can watch via all those um, channels. Unfortunately, tonight we don't have a screen to find out what you're saying, but the comments are always well received, and I know that the players go back and um, re-watch the game um, as, it, as they they can do probably as an analysis thing but also it's nice to you know you never see yourself play do you unless someone's filmed it no I know after the uh, game of Gloucester for UCAF Remembrance last week I, I jumped back on on the Thursday and Friday and, and had a look back at some of the, the things that we could do better and work on that we could take away for our next meeting not at all disappointing to lose to a Gloucester United side though was it it was a really good game really good contest as the RAF get ever closer to the try line this is definitely the closest they've been all game, and um, they're trying to use the power of the forwarders at the moment, JC, to, to get over the line. Yeah, that um, shows real dominance at scrum time, so it's worth trusting that, that front five to try and get you over the line. And uh, the arm even fringed again, close to that red zone, so they'll have to keep an eye on their uh, discipline as uh, the area for getting closer. And they'll just play again to the line and um, yeah, get as close as they can and try and rely on their line out. Yeah, either that or just pick and go from here, to be fair. Yeah, if you're getting good yardage go, yeah. from it, uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Fair uh, bearing in mind the conditions, you don't want to do anything uh, too severe or try and spin it out wide. Going in for a scrum, it looks like. Yeah, good, that's a good decision. Yeah, as I said, this is closest the RAF have, have been, and... Um, to be honest, after a fairly scrappy first 20 minutes, um, it could have gone either way, with both sides being penalised. And as we see the uh, the mist coming off the players, the steam in this lovely rain, um, let's see if the RAF can get the first points on the board. And their scrum has been dominant. Yeah, you don't want this ball coming out any quicker than it needs to. Yeah, they're trying to keep it in there, trying to keep it safe. And the ball is out. And they're going for a little kick forward. Could that go to press? Oh, lovely tape by cover two there. Yeah, he's done really well there under pressure. That's what you need in a winger, isn't it? Stranded. And that won't have gone far. So Yeah, Army accidentally offside there, I believe. So, uh, RAF penalty. So, RAF put in here. Yeah, I think he's gone back to the original knock-on. Uh, I thought they were trying to go quickly and, uh, and knock it on themselves, so... The RAF, silly, silly mistake to make, really, trying to rush that then uh, and hand the possession back over to the Army. So, Kevin van der Leest is the uh, Army scrum half. And given how strong that push has been from the RAF, yeah, the ref's given a penalty to the army there. Okay. It, it looked like we were getting real dominance. Um, he, he said that the props coming across. Um, from my angle, it didn't look like that, but <laughs> we'll have to trust the referee's decision on that one, I think. Yeah, it did go round at a, a rate of knots, but it didn't look like the RAF like had the stepped full eight, out. Full 80, in fact. Yeah, whether it was the, the army tight under, under a lot of pressure. Okay, so we have an army put in just into uh, their opposition's half. In fact, right on the halfway line. That's convenient for us, JC. Perfect. Yeah, we've, we've got a good position for this one. Let's see if it goes straight down the middle and the, uh, the RAF get up and compete again. Your training head, you'll be able to see exactly what the RAF are doing right or wrong here. Oh, very close. They are definitely competing no more. Yeah, this, it's got to be done. We're not going to get much more than front ball from there. And, um, Sorry, knock on by the army there as well. Again, conditions, ball was low on the ground. Oh, my apologies. Yeah. Kind of been a knock on. So as Ben Collins went up in the line out, uh, he came across and right. uh, got his hands on the, his opposite number in the air for the army. So uh, it's a penalty to them uh, and gives them another opportunity to get back into the RAF half. I mean, kudos to the referee in conditions like this as well. It's a hard job at the best of times, isn't it? 
Yeah, it's not great. Hopefully their communications with the two ARs are working well. Yeah. And he's getting good, some good info from both sides of the pitch because he, he's going to need that uh, as the conditions potentially worsen or the uh, shirts get a bit muddier with numbers, etc. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, you will have seen the lovely gesture by the Scotland rugby at the weekend wearing Doddy's tartan, but I couldn't see the numbers. They weren't very clear, but it was such a lovely gesture. Yeah, no, it was great to see that. And it looks great hanging in the changing room, so I suppose after 40, 50 minutes, yeah. then, then things might get a bit difficult for yeah. the referees. <laughs> so the army then back only a few 10 metres from, um, from their try line. Can they get the first points on the board here at Whitney for RAF versus Army. Under 23 into services, the first of three matches we'll be bringing you live here with BFBS. That's a lovely few metres made by the men in red. And they've got a lot of space and a lot of players out here. So they'll be really challenging that RAF defence, which has proved pretty good so far. Ooh, ball lost there, but looked like a knock on. I'm not sure if the ref, ref saw it or went backwards. No. Got away with that one, but kick forward and well taken by the men in blue. Yeah, back for another penalty. These games do to and fro, don't they, JC? I mean, you couldn't really call it at this stage. No, it could easily go either way. It's just taking each opportunity as they come. Uh, I mean, the Army have had a fair few uh, close to the RAF trial line with us only getting down into their half once, but neither coming away with any points as of yet. And interesting, again, I think the um, the Army aren't going for the sticks, are they? Um, they're going for the bigger score. Yeah, looks like they're going to kick to the corner. Mm -hmm. But again, whether they're going to try something to go a bit further back in the line out uh, or the RF probably compete at the front. So they're going to have to work hard to, to take anything past that. So kick to the corner there and we'll have another army throw in at the line out. And they are... What would you say, 10 metres there from the try line? Oh, lovely take there. RAF just preparing, I think, for the um, the mall that forms at the bottom there rather than competing at the line out. Yeah, decided not to compete so yeah. they could work on their, their mall D. Um, it's holding out okay at the minute, but the army are being patient. Uh, but I think the ref called use it. Very animated wing is um, Tex Kovatu here on the right wing for for the men in red. Always calling for it, even though he's miles away. Yeah, I think he wants it. I want that, that kick out wide for him. Uh, I think he backs himself against yeah. his opposite number. So the army close to the bin, gone off to the left this time. Bit of space. But the RAF are ever-present there in defence. And yeah. that is an army penalty. Yeah, it's costly errors from the, the Air Force side of them, and it penalty count must be into double figures by now. So I'd imagine at some point it could be now the referee's going to go to his pocket. Yeah, because he's already given warnings, hasn't he, JC? So you can do a team warning, but do you think he's picking out someone in particular? Uh, I, I think this is the team. I think right. he, he had that conversation before. Uh, we're getting close to the red zone, so it's, uh, it looks like Ben Collins okay. uh, going to the bin for 10 minutes, which is going to really affect the RAF's defence now with it losing Ben uh, and being one, the one down as well. well. We know how much being a man down in rugby, you know, there's all these conversations about there not being red cards because it's so detrimental to the team who lose a player, isn't it, for that amount of time? Yeah, especially with this physical battle up front uh, with a pick-and-go game, it's, it's going to be key. Everyone else is going to have to work that extra hard to keep the army out. Well, the RAF have done themselves proud in defence so far um, and keeping the RAF, uh, the army out, sorry, but let's see what they can do. This close to try line, a man down. And actually, at the moment, they're taking them back, but the army will always know they've got that extra man. And space out here on the right. And the ref signal the penalty again for the army. Ooh, we're over in the corner and we have a try. We've got the first try. 
the army have taken advantage of their one man advantage and scored in the left corner that's five points to the army here first score it's taken 35 minutes but we've got it yeah, the, the RF defence is eventually being broken down then with the, with the physicality of the army. Um, frustrating from the RAF side of it, it's, it's our own penalty count and infringements that are giving them that opportunity. But fair play to the army, uh, they had their opportunity there and now we've got another nine minutes or so with the extra man as well. Brilliant score there from the army and it was only minutes after they went a man up um, and they... You know, they knew that in their heads, and you'll always have more space out. Well, they went to the, the shorter side, actually, but they had space out wide on both sides. And you, you think any side they would have gone, they would have scored with that. So um, Yeah, and they, they had the penalty uh, to come back to as well. So pressure was off for them. They, they could try something a little bit there. And, uh, yeah, it, it worked out, and they're final up. So 5-0 five, five to the army. Let's see. I believe it would be Chris Hubbersty uh, taking this kick quite a tough one from um, the the um, sideline there but uh, we'll see if he can add another two it's got the distance and it's over lovely really lovely con con conversion there so seven nil up there to the army um, advantage goes to them and they're still a man up probably for another eight minutes and at least until the half time yeah, the RF have really got to compose themselves now, uh, keep possession, work the phases uh, to try and maintain as much time as possible in the army half until they can get back up to 15. Well, often a score brings, you know, a sort of a challenge to the other team to up their game. Um, the RF have definitely had some positives, but um, yeah, keeping that penalty count will be down. Will be keeping that penalty count down will be something they need to achieve to uh, get further on in this game. Yeah, we really need to sort the breakdown out from the RF side of it. Um, a lot of infringements on penalties there, so hopefully the match can go on at half time and we, we can start reducing that a little bit more uh, and transfer the pressure over to the army. Okay, so RF line out here. And that was a good clean take from the light blues. Lewis Borrington there with a great kick forward into space, but that will end up into army hands. But, well, it was either, yeah, I think knocked on, so the RAF have just taken advantage. Good skills, actually, you know, to read the game that quickly and to take advantage of um, bad ball. Yeah, good pressure from the RAF defence has, has been fairly solid. They've got good line speed, good physicality. Uh, they just need to capitalise on any opportunity that the army give us. Definitely playing with feeling out there, JC. There's um, there's a lot sort of a lot of discussions, if I can call them that, happening off the ball. Yeah, there's a fair amount of tension, uh, and you'd imagine both the teams to be giving each other uh, a few comments and digs here and there. <laughs> so uh, uh, it's all in good spirits, I'm sure. Obviously. So scrum army put in here at the scrum, and light blue is starting to look a nice shade of brown. Yeah, I don't envy the kit man after nights like this, trying to get the kit clean again for the but next this one. This is what kit men love. This is why they do it. Uh, it, it depends on your kit man, I think. <laughs> and the, um, both teams actually relying on that high ball. And um, the takes have been far more impressive than they were in the first nervy 10 minutes here. That was young Kieran Prescott there with quite a good run. Yeah, a lot of high ball being used, understandable in the conditions. Yeah, just waiting for someone to make an error. Yeah. He was lucky he bounced that for him. Oh, just, just didn't connect with the ball there. Tried to feed it back in, but um, he and the ball went over the line. 
Well, the referee's given the penalty to the army for something there. I couldn't okay. quite see what that was for, whether that was a bit of afters. I think that was a bit of afters. And now back chat, and he's marching yeah. back another 10 metres. So, again, more indiscipline from the RAF. Uh, we must be up to about 13 penalties by now, which is uh, pretty Not criminal good. for 80 minutes, let alone 35. Going on the crowd reaction, I think there was a bit of afters because there was a few woos. A bit like a firework display. Um, but without my binoculars, I'm afraid I can't see much on the other side. So the army again in a very strong position, only metres out from the try line, and it will be there put into a line out. As the RAF sort out shoelaces. Tactical front row breather, I think there. <laughs> is that a known? That's a known uh, tactic. Uh, amongst all props, it is. <laughs> find an injury or a shoelace. Catch your breath uh, and then get ready to compose yourself and go oh, again. Brilliant. So the army, again, um, will try and score before half time. I mean, they're 7-0 up as it is, but I'm sure they'd love another score before they go inside for the break. As steam rises from uh, the packs. Another penalty to the army for that more collapsing from the RAF side. So Dear. potentially free ball to the army and see what they can do with it now. And they're, yeah, with a man down, they're going to use, try and get, they're trying to draw in as much RAF defence, aren't they? So that they can then keep, get the ball out when they need to and have extra numbers. Yeah, that pick and go game will tie in defenders and hopefully free up some more space. But whether with the conditions and the, the weather that you can utilise and exploit that is, a, is another thing altogether. We're going back for another army penalty here. Even closer, so um, it just seems to be piling on the RAF at the moment. Yeah, they, they want to be go. careful they don't get another yellow card if uh, they start infringing this close out from their iron try line. So the army in control here at Whitney for the first inter-services match-up between the RAF and the army. And they're trying to use their extra man to take the ball over the line for a second time, but they have got space out right as well. Yeah, the ball is out into the centres. Oh, under the post. He's under the post. He's going to call it. I don't think the ref is sighted there. Yeah, no, the he's ref held can't up. See it, yeah. So no score there, but a sign of what the army are trying to achieve, um, being one man up. And it will be their ball, only five metres out. So time off for an injury as well. Let's give the RAF time to have a quick chat, compose themselves again. Hopefully start firing in some momentum into the boys to, to keep the army out. Oh, and the rain just got heavier. We bring you weather reports here, as well as rugby. And it looks like, I mean, the army is setting up for a pick and go there, aren't they? Yeah, they're going to utilise the carrying of the forwards yeah. now, see if they can get over. And any team loves a score just before half-time. It gives you that momentum going into the dressing room and um, coming out here. Probably still a man up for a couple of minutes into the second half. Still held up. Still held up there. So the RAF are doing a fine job and um, half time has been called. So 7 0 here to the Army. They did try and score for a second try there um, just before half time, but um, the RAF have stuck it out and you, you've got to be proud of that. But there are too many mistakes from the RAF for, for a first, first half wrap, JC. Yeah, mentally, the, the RAF have defended really well. Uh, they've held the army out, uh, they've kept them at bay. Um, okay, they've, they've considered a lot of penalties doing so at times as well. And we have a fair few missed opportunities from the, RA, uh, the, the army sorry, uh, to be further ahead on the scoreboard. But at, at 7 0, it's certainly anyone's game. And um, generally, I mean. <sighs> I know we, I, I banged on about the rain and I can't get over it, the fact that you know, I'm soaked through to every layer. I think I've got four layers on. But um, 
Is it not good for players, especially this young as well, to sort of be playing in these conditions and, and testing them, you know, at every available opportunity? Yeah, I mean, the, the weather can be described as a leveller in, in opportunities like this, and, and then you rely on your own, your own physical ability, uh, your mental skills that you can put into practice to, to just persevere, and you keep keep knocking the door down, and it eventually it'll break. But again, with the, a lot of the errors that we've had, the penalty count, um, you've got to try and put that behind you, uh, refocus on your next job and go again. Well, thanks, Justin, for the first 40 minutes. Um, we are going to go to a quick break now, and um, jo you'll join us hopefully again for the second half, but um, stay with us for the second half, because before that, we've got some action from last week's UK Armed Forces Remembrance match down at, at Gloucester at King's Home. But first, Julian Evans has been speaking to the Army's new head coach, Lieutenant Colonel Tin Osman. Having been parachuted into the role as head coach for the Army senior rugby side, Lieutenant Colonel Tim Oseman is keen to carry on the silverware winning success of his predecessor Mal Roberts. Oseman has stepped up from his role as director of under 23s rugby and is looking to build a championship taking team. This season I expect us to you know, be able to try and uh, select uh, and prepare a team that is super competitive uh, with people wanting to come and enjoy red shirt rugby. Uh, people coming to stick their hand up and say, I want a cap, I want to get a place in that team. We've got the French Army too in the new year as well. Uh, and to, you know, to do a job, that, that's what we're here for. Um, we've got a, a whole bunch of very, very keen and talented soldiers uh, and we've just got to transfer that into a very talented, talented and keen uh, army team. Yeah, you, you start the year as defending champions. So yeah. do, and, the, and the fact that you've come into it perhaps not as you'd hoped or and certainly anticipated as the, as the season started. So does that bring with it its extra pressures? Uh, a little personally, um, but no, the, the, you know, the, the, the bedrock is there. Mal's you know, in the mid middle of his programme, effectively, and you know, the, the season set. Yeah, he's got the success last year, has set us up for victory anyway. Um, so, yeah, it's my job, the pressure is me to continue that and not drop the ball. The fact that you've been involved recently with the under-23s, that will help, because I know the Army put into place this succession, you know, you identify, identify players early, and then you want them to, to go on and succeed. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, age shouldn't be a barrier, um, but you know, it's par for the course with the, the careers that these uh, young men and women have got to undertake. There's times where they can't necessarily be available as much as they might in other forms of, of life and sport. Uh, so, yeah, the, the 23s offers, offers them the opportunity to, to get into the system, to understand what reps into rugby is all about, and, and to showcase their talents. Uh, and if we can help pull that through, and, and you know, the experience I've had for a couple of years with the 23s allows me to understand what the, 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 the grassroots and the younger element is like, Let's, let's bring them through. And so, uh, yeah, everybody's got an opportunity to stick their hand up and, and you know, try and get a place uh, for King's Island Twickenham. The way that you guys prepare, people will think that you're a professional outfit and, and they can be forgiven for that because of the way that you operate. You know, in all sense of the word, you are, but you're not. You're, you're all amateurs exactly. and, you're, and you're all giving up your own time. There's a huge sacrifice for this role. Everyone has day jobs. Uh, they have to do courses that uh, are important to their careers and we understand that. We expect the guys who want to play red shirt rugby to stick their hand up and be good at their job. We are soldiers first, an athlete, a rugby player, a sports person second. Uh, and that's very much our, our mantra. Uh, that helps our culture, though. You know, the army is about teamwork. The army shows that sort of character, resilience, fitness, leadership. That's key to everything we do. So uh, we expect the guys to, to put that back in when they are at their home units. Uh, and then, likewise, uh, we can try and offer them something back as a privilege for having to have the opportunity to play army rugby too. And just looking at how this season's going to play out, I mean, it's a very short window to prepare for inter-services rugby. It all comes down to just two matches. And, of yeah. course, this year there is a slight question mark over when it will be played at Twickenham. We know it will be at Twickenham, mm. but we don't know when perhaps the deciding game will be. Uh, we had senior trials two weeks ago. Uh, so that short window of, of results, if you like, for, for the April and May game or when it might be, um, yeah, is, is a few months away yet. But the guys have already got it on their focus and the radar. Uh, we, we saw some players uh, have a go and stick their hands up and see uh, if they are up for the challenge uh, a couple of weeks ago. So October, you know, through for the police game uh, and Blackheath, French Army, Oxford, Cambridge, we've, we've got a bit of preparation time there. In his earlier years, the Royal Artillery officer enjoyed success as an army player. The challenge now is to mastermind victories in a coaching capacity. Sniffing the white line now, those forwards. 
Bulls presenting, now it's over. I think it is the captain, I think it is Jared Haler who's got it, yes it is. Looking to try and get the drive on, they've had to wait and it's going to skewer to the right. So Blake does very well, and Blake is there. That is a terrific, terrific work from the young hooker. Two second rows for the Cherry and Whites. One from Long Levens Rugby Club, Jack Cuthbert in there as Tom Waltz from Hartbury Bucks. And they're over. Looking to see who's come up with the ball. I think it's the hooker again, isn't it? No, it's the skipper. It's Captain Jack Bartlett. It's a much better defence set from UCAP here, but Dave Manning gets through there, but they've got to stop him here. It's a strong finish. Uh, so Blake wasn't going to be stopped. Raging ball from the side of that ruck. And it's try number two for Gloucester United's number two, said Blake. Take at the front from Hutchinson. The alignment not quite what they were hoping for, but Thacko indeed does get the break. Releases his man, and it's Will Lemon who's in the right place at the right time. UCAF hit back with their second try. Good work from Lemon. Ball still there. The little shit ball is lovely from the scrum half. Pulled down just short. Nixon it is. Rob Nixon adds a, a coup de grace really to this first half for the home side. A strong test to, to start the second half. Yeah, looking down there, I can see Kai Beasley's on as well. So it's the entire front row change from UCAF. But they're now in defensive mode as Gloucester get the drive on. Heading for the line, the referee's arm goes up. It's the captain once again. Jack Bartlett gets his second try. Sakao on the rumble, McDonald feeding the forwards again, and they go again. Tries good, I think it's the captain once again, it is Jared Haler. Take control of it, and UCAF at the moment are, are putting some real pressure on in the Gloucester half. Line out works. Cotto the elder in charge of the train, Bartlett comes through, but illegally so, but it's over. Oh, the breakthrough, oh, the tap tackle, but off they go, support is there, and the try is there, looking at the touch judge, Nick Woods happy. He's just got to bide his time, like we found out tonight, it's, it's a position he's learning, as he started off as a... Oh, that's a lovely chip and chase. And here's a golden moment to finish. Well, there was a virtuoso score. Officials in good position. Good try. Ah, oh, there's the try. The fifth try is in there for UCAF. Who's coming up with the ball? I think it was uh, Viniami Kotobalavu.
And welcome back to Whitney Rugby Club for the second half of this inter-services matchup between the RAF under-23 and the Army under-23. And it looks like the players are keen to get back out and maybe finish this game in these conditions. I'm, of course, joined by Justin Coleman, JC, as I'll be calling him for the rest of the next 40 minutes. Um, Justin, I mean, it might be that they're just like, look, in this weather, let's get out, get it finished before the players get cold and what have you. Yeah, it's good to keep the guys warm uh, and get back into it again. So uh, I think there's a couple of blue shirts I see, as opposed to brown. So <laughs> a couple of changes from the RAF side, hopefully, and uh, the bench will come into play this second half. OK, we'll try and bring those changes to you. They are pretty clear who are the new ones on after half-time break, but already it's competitive, and that's um, the RAF have won a penalty. So a good positive start there from the light blues. Yeah, the next score will be really key in this game from 7-0. So for the RF to try and narrow the gap or the Army to extend their lead. So uh, that's going to be key the next 10 minutes or so. Oh. We are a sitting target here in this gantry, I'm telling you. Not only got to deal with the rain, there are rugby balls flying around as well. Um, but the RF with a, a positive start here to the second half. Reminder that they are 7-0 down and very much... Well, very nearly more than 7-0 down after a, a good effort by the Army just before half-time, but they'll be pleased that it's just one score away. Um, we've got an RAF line out here. Oh, it's lovely taken. Yeah, they seem to be reading the line out much better as, as they lose the ball in there. Yeah, I'm not quite so sure that was planned, but it came back to the RAF side and then subsequently knocked it on, so the Army getting rid of it now. It's good battle in the air, but the army have come up for this knock-ons all over the place there. Yeah, I think it might have been the RF knock-on first, but it's given it the army knock-on uh, so after that competition in the air, so RAF scrum again. So if anyone, if you are listening, wherever you are in the world, please do feel free to leave a comment on um, the Forces News Facebook, YouTube, or... Um, via another means if you're watching um, over, overseas as well. We do try and bring this to as many forces viewers as we can around the world, especially if your friends and family are watching from anywhere in the world. Unfortunately, we don't have eyes on those comment threads at the moment, but please do leave your good luck messages or messages to friends and family who you know are playing, and we'll, we'll make sure that they um, are read out later. And of course, the players do go back and watch these games, so they'll be able to see the comments being made as if it was live as well. So thank you for joining us wherever you are in the world. That's a change, change over there as yeah, well. Yeah, so again, it's just, just unneeded. The, R, the referee had given the RF a penalty for the Army loose head. Uh, and again, just, just verbal comments from the RAF, and he's changed it over. Um, a big thank you to our cameramen here this evening, Mark Hearn and Lewis Bartley, and also our uh, techie guy, Scott Richmond, who is here as part of the pack in the teaming reign as um, the army retain possession here, and it's back in their, in their half. Yeah, players slipping all over the place as it gets ever more muddy out there in the middle. Army, as ever, just need to keep the ball tight in. And a kick forward there for one of the Army backs. Lovely take. Yeah, good possession from the Army at the minute. Just going through the phases. Looks like they've changed up a little bit. So some of the coaching interventions from some of the guys in chats at half-time uh, from, from Slady uh, must be taken into effect for the boys. Yeah, ball slipping through fingers at a fast rate here at Whitney as the rain continues to team it down. But the players seem to have adjusted well to the conditions. And um, it's not exactly classic running rugby, but um, we are at least getting ball in hand. Yeah, and exactly. And whoever comes out on top of this, um, the conditions will be long forgotten then. Yeah. It's, it's all about one thing and one thing only. Yeah, it won't matter at all, will it? And, of course, the Navy awaits both of these teams before we... Uh, can announce a winner in a couple of weeks' time. And a penalty then. The RAF seems to be on the receiving end now. That's good. 
Yeah, lovely. really, really good steal. Uh, so strong body position over the ball. Uh, the tackle not releasing. So hopefully the RAF can release some pressure now and uh, get some good distance on this kick. Got to see a few tashes in the RAF lineup, but I'm assuming that's a Movember. Yeah, I'd like to think so. so that's uh, <laughs> Kia, <laughs> Kia McDougall. So Kia's brother Ross McDougall used to be the, the RAF scrum off okay. uh, before he left to join the civ civilian police. So uh, he looks very much like his brother, um, <laughs> but I'm sure that the tash is a Movember thing only. Um, certainly doesn't. Are you saying it. they wouldn't personally choose to grow that? Uh, I, I wouldn't like to comment just in case, but uh, I know he didn't have one last time I saw him. Fair enough. Well, he's done quite well then. Uh, considering the a, age, yes, yeah. it's a strong effort. <laughs> right, back to the rugby and not moustaches. And the light blues have possession in their half, so let's see what they can do with it. Josh Peacock there showing he's got the, the ball skills, taking it forward for the light blues. Yeah, good strong carry. And yeah, this is this is good play, good strong play from the RF. Just need to keep it. Harry stays in there. Oh, that's, sorry, Kieran Prescott with the ball. Yeah, showing good footwork considering the conditions as well. Oh, lovely, lovely quick hand off there. Lovely hands. I think he lost the. Oh, Lost the ball there, but it's come back for an RAF penalty anyway. Yeah, another free ball, an infringement from the army. So hopefully the uh, RAF can stay on the side of the referee for a, for a while and uh, start moving down that pitch. And the RAF are back to full strength, aren't they? Uh, Two, three, just, four, just five, six. <laughs> no, I think they're still... Oh, no. I'm sorry, I've seem to have lost the ability to count. Yeah, I'll Back count 15. Stroke. I'll count 15. There are 15, yeah. I thought so. So, both teams at full strength out here in the beautiful British November weather. Um, the RAF, as JC pointed out a lot in the first half, need to keep their penalty count down. And so far, they've um, been on the uh, receiving end of penalties, which can only be good from a light boot point of, point of view as they all slow turn a lovely colour of brown and they're winning the line out too. Yeah, Ben's come back on off the yellow and uh, that's, that's a really good good take with uh, some quick ball. So hopefully we get something here with a 3-1. Oh, and they've got space and they've got space and they've got space. And he's over and lovely. Oh, it's being taken back. No, no try. Sorry, I got overexcited there. Uh, I was just about to join you, Kath, I think. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, I'm not sure whether it was at a forward pass or... Well, the infringement was, I couldn't oh, see on that so far good. side, but so yeah, good. considering offset piece to go from uh, one side of the pitch to the other in these conditions, that's the first time we've seen that this evening. Well, hopefully RF will take some strength from that and, you know, know that in th these conditions as well, that what they're capable of. But that was um, a lovely sort of seven ball handoff. So um, I'll be put in here at the scrum after a no try from uh, from the RAF and it's back and it's great stuck, pressure yeah, great pressure great banner penalty so again that's a great turnover from the RAF pack. oh fantastic they'll, they'll take they'll take real pride in that uh, and that'll give them a, a lot of uh, uh, courage to go forward and then really take it to the army yeah they've um, they've really demonstrated right from that first scrum haven't they that they've got the um, the strength up front. Yeah, they just need to capitalise on that with them all now uh, and, and try and push the army over. So having that physical dominance up front for that forward pack uh, should really spur them on now as, as we get closer to the army line. But they just played such lovely shape in that non-try. Yeah, that's the, the kind of play you'd expect yeah. to see uh, in, in much clearer conditions as well. Um, so again, that, that should give them a lot of confidence now uh, to, to hopefully try and level up the scores. OK, so another RAF line-up. Well taken. Yeah, really good movement and a really good setup here. Just need to be patient. Yeah, use that strength, use those numbers. There's more coming in. This might well be a try in the corner. No, 
<laughs> Held too, up. too far away from us to see what's going yeah, on over yeah. there. But it's just a whole load of brown bodies. Hopefully we'll look to the referee for some indication. So I think it looks, was he given the penalty? Okay. No, he said it was held up, so... Army have got the kick out. But the RAF are threatening. I guess, you know, we have to look at that in a positive way from a light blue point of view. Yeah, we just need to start capitalising there. A couple of times now, we've not come away with any points, so uh, we just need to start getting that scoreboard ticking over a bit just to give us a bit more confidence and uh, keep that swing of momentum on the blue, light blue side. And I, I reckon the Army, well... I wouldn't say they're quaking in their boots, but um, they will be taking this in and going, hang on, we've been hammered for the first five minutes of this second half. Yeah, good going backwards at scrum time's really going to start taking it out of uh, the, the army front row. Uh, and, and they're going to know that, that they're going to start mentally thinking about that scrum. Um, but with the conditions we've got, uh, in fact, saying that, it looks like the, the army bench are warming up. So there's a few big boys in red uh, getting ready to come on and make a difference. We've actually got one injury to um, one of the army players, so that will be an injury replacement. But, yeah, there are three replacements lined up, red and gleaming in their shirts to come on. That looks like a, a wrist injury there or a shoulder. Yeah, something just come off there, so uh, replacements coming on. I think there's a bit of a delay with the... Uh team management with the, the subs cards that are needed for an inter-service game, so uh, they're not going to get the, those guys on just yet. Lewis Bobbington there with um, standing, well, in his full-back, sensibly kicking the ball rather than, oh, knocking it on forward. Against the handling area, Costin, <laughs> yeah. they, they had numbers and space there as well, um, but conditions forcing that, that handling error, so... Scrum time again. The army are going to be really keen to try and get these replacements on uh, for this scrum to, to try and stop the tide a little bit uh, and with the RAF getting the nudge. So replacements coming on for the army. Ben Murphy, 21. Um, Freddie Muland, we've got Maseki Yakubi. Um, I think I counted four then, and um, well, three of them are in the pack, so that should make a difference. Yeah, it looks like uh, two props in the scrum half, so uh, nice fresh front row, but hopefully the, the RAF will have a bit of confidence on the last one, uh, and they can really have a go. They've got the opportunity, pitch location, to try and attack this army pack. Ben Murphy has come on as the, the new scrum half, um, noticeably so because you can still see his number. So an army put in there. Yeah, far more solid scrum from the army. Yeah, that's worked. The replacements have worked. The wind really picking up here now at Whitney. Oh, unlucky. Not a knock on, but unfortunately a knock off play so so still 7-0 here at Whitney between the army under 23 here up 7 and RAF under 23 but it's been a promising second half so far from the Royal Air Force they've just got no points to show for it unfortunately um, the army well just brought on a whole load of forwards for to improve their pack but um we'll see what that does to the overall game yeah that'll cost the RAF not capitalizing with any points uh, certainly with that scrum dominance and uh, forward momentum with that mall so uh, they're going to really need to work hard and uh, try and get that ball back in field position Oof, lovely You know what, he's, um, Army Hooker has had a lovely, well, both hookers actually have got really like, individual strength and have really carried the ball quite far for both their sides. Yeah, they've worked really hard, both hookers, uh, which is great to see for services rugby, uh, uh, with time on their side as well to, to carry on with it, with only under 23. So they're only going to get better from here and learn a lot from tonight. 
What position were you, JC, when you played? Uh, I, I was a loose head. Uh, okay. So, again, I was probably built for the front row <laughs> just due to my height, uh, lack of, uh, and size and width as well. So, uh, yeah, many a, a dismal night scrummaging to death uh, in the front row. So the army using the high ball again. The ball's gone out pretty much in line with where it was kicked from, so... Uh, <laughs> Not much advantage there, but... No, nothing really. Uh, but again, it's that 50-50 call on possession at line-out time, so we'll see what the RAF can do. Um, I don't know how much you've um, been enjoying anything of the Rugby League World Cup that's been going on, but I think in the military you see more so than, you know, most setups. Um, you see a lot of Rugby League. There's a lot of cross-code players, aren't there? What are the advantages when you get a Rugby League player coming into Rugby Union? Uh, yeah, historically there used to be a lot more transition, uh, especially defensively. There was a lot taken from the rugby league game into the defensive structure uh, of the union game, but just the basic skill set, uh, ability to identify uh, and exploit space as well. So uh, there's, a, there's a lot more crossover. Uh, again, it's just that set piece element uh, and, and some of the nuances within union that, that we find difficult, but um, there's good representation across all three services uh, that we've seen within the pro game of the rugby league as well. Yeah, I mean, it does seem like the rugby league seems like more of a flowing, you know, you've got a lot more speed in it. But I think that's just rugby union at the moment is so, it's, you know, there are, the backs are there. It's just that it seems to be a lot of um, dominance put on, on the front row and on, on the set pieces. Yeah, defences are very well organised, so there's not as much space as there used to be uh, to try and exploit. So that, that physical battle that we can see in the pro game uh, works its way down. And, and looking at the size of some of the guys that are yeah. coming through now as well, um, within the under-23s, the, that, that front foot momentum from some big, big carries is going to make a huge difference to that defensive setup. Uh, injury replacement for um, the RAF as well. You can spot the new players because you can see what colour the shirts they are. But that's an RAF throw in. Oh, lovely. How, are they allowed to be held up for that long? Uh, yeah, just about. Um, so, again, the RAF throwing some dollar movements into that uh, line out, which is probably uh, some interventions by uh, Kibsey, the RAF forwards coach at half time, just yep. to try and trigger the army to go off early. This could be lovely. There's an absolutely amazing run. Oh, no, he's been brought back. Ref pulled him back Carried again. again. Ref pulled him back Ref again. Ref is ruining my commentary skills. <laughs> or lack of. Oh, it's coming right back. I'm not quite sure what he's given that for. That's one thing we don't have, I'm afraid, is a ref link. That would help, wouldn't it? So, army ball again by um, another lovely move by the RAF, but uh, sadly not, again, ending in any points. No, it's, it's, it's promising, but again, it's yep. going to be promising before so long, and if it's not turned into points, then uh, it could be a lot of wasted effort. Yeah. Uh, you can't leave any what-ifs or opportunities out there on the pitch. Because the problem with this in-service is the way it's set up, you know, you, you basically... Have to we have to win both games to really? I mean, it, I'm sure there are machinations at the end w when it comes to score scoring points and who scored what are for and against. But you know, really, they've only got two chances and that's it. Yeah, pretty much. And again, with, with two games, you, you want to win the first one. Um, again, w whether you're close, that you can have work ons and takeaways from it. But to get that win means everything in the first one to take that confidence into the second. So um, either team will, will be void going into their navy game respectively um, if they can get a victory tonight. That's the RAF up against um, the Navy and haven't next week. And then the final game, we'll see the Army play the Navy in Aldershot. But it is 7-0 up to the men in red here against the RAF. That was lost. The ball was lost then in tackle. So I think that is turnover ball. And the RAF have a ch another chance here. Yeah, again, the conditions coming into play. Uh, it was a decent hit from the RF defensive side to force in that area, which is good to see, but it just depends what they can do from it from here. The RF just look like they've been buoyed slightly, at least by those chances. You know, we've seen what they're capable of. 
Yeah, hopefully that'll give them some confidence now. Once they, they know they can finish things off, they just need to be a bit more clinical. The, the penalty count for the minute um, has subsided, which yes. is good to see. Um, but they just need to finish off with these opportunities. And kicking forward for himself, but then that's going to go. Oh, I mean, it's gone into touch, but that's actually quite a lovely ball. Yeah, the army have got to exit from here. So again, pressure at line out time. Rain is causing some technical issues uh, here at BFBS, but we will do our best to bring you, continue to bring you live coverage here from Whitney um, Rugby Club, where the Army are 7 0 up against the RAF under 23s in the first game of this Inter Services 2022. We have another Army line out. Again, battered aside. And the men in red retaining possession. Ben Murphy there trying to drag him off but it, good yeah, counter rock from yeah. the RAF there I think we've turned that ball over yeah brilliant yep the RAF really ste stepping up here and seeing the space yeah there's a lot out there but, but getting there is easier than it looks yeah So Paul Blades, who's come on for the RAF, he was described as a um, young Andrew Sheridan. Would you agree with that? Uh, I don't know that's a good thing or a bad thing, to, uh, <laughs> to be honest. Well, he's very talented. Yeah, no, that, that's good. Uh, I he, think it's more to do with his build, yeah. Yeah, no, for, for a youngster, I think Paul's only 19, so uh, we heard good things about Paul from uh, Jacko up at Cosford as he was coming through his face to training, so uh, it's great to see him putting on an RAF shirt tonight, and it's definitely one for the future, uh, and I know I'll be keeping uh, close tabs on him as well. There you go. Hard to believe that some of these ones are only 19, 18, 19 year olds. Incredible. There's some more fresh legs there for the RAF. So the RAF behind here, but definitely having the better of the second half at um, Whitney for this under-23 clash. The first of three being brought to you live by BFBS. Um, and yeah, they are a converted try down, but definitely a better team here in the second half. Yeah, we've got promise. a lot of phases in the middle of the park at the minute. We're not making massive territory, to no. be honest. Uh, it's only a matter of time before there's an infringement. So they want to come up with something here. Well, they've won that one. Uh, yep, yeah, RAF penalty. Refs put the clock off as well. This could be a yellow for the army, potentially. Was that for the tackle where he sort of ended up diving forward, I think? He wasn't diving. I'm not making out he's a footballer. But it looked like a, a sliding tackle. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure. I, I missed what the actual okay. infringement was for, to be honest. Uh, I'm not seeing the referee signal. Oh, I may have missed it. Yeah. But it, might, it might have been at one of the tackles. So the um, army men then down... One man down for 10 minutes, and this is what happened in the first half when the Army scored, when the RAF were down, so maybe the RAF, you know, they really should make the most of this Yeah, they've got, they've got 10 minutes with an extra man now. They really need to make this count and get some points on the board. So certainly the momentum is in the RAF's favour. They just need to capitalise on it now, and then they're going to really test the Army's defence. But again, another unforced error not making touch, and yep. the Army can clear their lines. Um, we're back where we were about 30 seconds ago. But RF really need to use this next 10 minutes, although they don't want it to play on their mind too much because then you're thinking, you're thinking too much about what you can do without actually doing it. Yeah, they just need to stick to their processes, uh, uh, trust in it, not worry too much about the conditions. You, you want to keep it tight, but you don't want to let that impact on, on how you play the game. So uh, hopefully they can just go through the phases, uh, take their opportunities and uh, try and find some space or a bit of individual brilliance from Kieran Prescott.
Yeah, Prescott now able to get the ball away cleanly there. And unfortunately, that's ended up in, um, well, unfortunately for Prescott, that's ended up in army hands. I am, of course, I'm completely unbiased. <laughs> You are understandably light blue focused, that's fine. Uh, I'm Jason. trying to be as impartial as I can, <laughs> but it's always difficult when you're playing against the army, to of be course. honest. Of course. So the RAF in possession, and they just need to keep this ball and do what they know they're capable of. That's a lovely kick forward, but that may well be saved there by the army, but... Yeah, that's a great tackle. Yeah, good decision to get, get the army... Defender into touch, although there is some chat between the uh, referee and the AR. Was that Prescott again with the tackle? I think it was. Yeah, he's, he's been outstanding tonight. It's just his kind of game, to be honest. So, uh, plenty of space for him to put that pace on, get that footwork in. Uh, he's tackled really well, which is good to see, considering his, his league background, you'd, you'd expect that. Yeah. Um, but... We just need to make sure this ball functions now uh, and utilise the extra forward. Right, can the RAF get a score here, which they desperately need with the Army 7 0 up? Good setup and good take. Good so, take, again, good strength. looking good and we're going forward here. Yeah. We'll watch the referees on. Yes, and they have to try the down. The RAF have scored. Well deserved, I think. Well deserved, JC. Yeah, it's, it's taken some time, uh, but again, having that extra man uh, and a good more setup, we, we saw that earlier on in this half as well. It's uh, uh, it's paid off. So, putting on the kick, there's plenty of time with the extra man now, but they just need to settle, calm the nerves a little bit, go through that process, uh, and repeat it. And deservedly, I think that was Josh Peacock who came up with the ball, so he was under that, and he's had a really good game at Hooker, hasn't he? Yeah, he's been outstanding. He's working really hard. Hopefully, he's got the legs to, to last out uh, and get the full 80 minutes in. So it'll be Keir McDougall, um, who you mentioned before, who's uh, taking this kick. I mean, I can, I can barely see a number. I assume that's Keir. Yeah, no, number 12, I've seen the moustache. Um, he's good to go, but it's, this is a diff tough kick for him. That wind's and really kicked wind up now. The wind really picked up. So the RAF have scored a try. They are five and the Army are seven. Can McDougall bring it back to levels? And he's hoid it. Unfortunately, a whole goal length to the right there, but can't be helped. Yeah, no, it's one of those things. Uh, they need, need the extra score anyway. Um, so hopefully uh, we can maintain position, work our way down the field again, um, really test this army uh, defensive setup. But they're going to have to really pull together uh, the Reds to make the most uh, of a bit of man down. So defensively, they've got to get their mentality right force the uh, RAF into some uh, errors with the conditions uh, and keep the ball themselves now. So it's really anyone's game. I mean, the weather aside, you know, I'm enjoying this. Yeah, it's a good competitive game. Um, I've not noticed the weather too much. The, the, <laughs> you know, I've no, mentioned it every no, five not seconds. at all, not at all. <laughs> um, I'm just glad I brought the umbrella. <laughs> something I need to add to my kit list, JC. An umbrella. It's invaluable just for this one moment. It's worth <laughs> every penny. So, the RAF are five. Um, they are the home team tonight. And the Army are seven in just the closest match. And um, it certainly hasn't felt so low scoring because there has been action. It's been action-packed. But a little bit of loss of composure there for the RAF, um, trying to kick the ball out, and they've not won any ground for themselves. Yeah, we've, they panicked the exit then that's given the Army territory uh, and the line out. So uh, we can see what the Army can do with this now. Uh, again, the RAF have got a spoil uh, and throw everything at it to try and get that ball back. Okay, so we have an army throw into the line out. Yeah, they're just cleaning the ball. Shame they can't do the same for the players. Yeah, I think they'd be a while. <laughs> um, the army line out's been pretty reliable so far. 
Yeah, it's scrappy, but they've maintained possession. And the army just need to maintain the pressure they sort of kept up in the first half because um, they're not winning the they're not getting the penalties that the RAF are giving away anymore, so they can't rely on that. Um, they just got to keep up the pressure, especially yeah. as they're still a man up. Commentators curse, then I think. Uh, <laughs> soon you should mention that the uh, RAF have conceded a penalty with hands in at ruck time. So oh. uh, again, this has given the army op opportunity here, uh, whether they go for the posts, uh, get the extra three points, or whether they go to the corner. Um, being an extra man down, I'd imagine they might go for the sticks and the three points here. Yep, going for three points. So the man taking this will be their scrum half, Kevin van der Liest. Um, slightly, well, none of them are straightforward in these conditions, but um, it is just left to the post. So under normal concerns, under normal circumstances, I can't speak. Under normal circumstances, this would be straightforward. Yeah, the last one he kicked was good uh, in the first half, so hopefully. Well, we're gonna, no, that's been skewed right. So the score remains 7 5 to the army here at Whitney in the first of the under 23 inter services matches of 2022. We're bringing you the next two live as well from Haven next week and Aldershot in the third week. And of course, both these teams will have to face the Navy before that inter services title is decided. The army are champions um, after a an incredible game against the RAF last year, which they won 31-28. Um, more replacements coming on for the men in red, as they are for the light blues. Yes, yeah, it's time to start getting some fresh legs on. Uh, getting the, the youngsters exposed as well into winter services rugby, which is good good to see. Uh, and hopefully they can bring some energy uh, for, the, to, to the, for the next 10, 15 minutes, or however long we've got left. Uh, we'll see you Ronono Kula. I know I've said that wrong, but that is an army replacement who's just come on, and um, he not only brings size, but also some speed as well. Yeah, they've, they've got a fair few uh, uh, big guys within the army team, so with their pick-and-go game, uh, they're going to be essential within the last few minutes. Uh, and we saw last year how, how much you can go down to the wire with the last player of that game. Yeah. I think that's Renona Kula. Forgive me if it's wrong, but try my best. They always say with Fijian's name is say what you see. This is true. Uh, I think I did okay when we did the shirt presentation. Okay, well done. I called him out for Mal last week, <laughs> uh, but it, even with the the Army Navy last year, the, with the one of the rugby league guys, Mitch, who'd come in. Uh, yes, of course. Philippa Japani. Um, <laughs> I've definitely said that wrong. Yeah, no, yeah. I had a bit of practice uh, and spoke well to done. Kev Rakiao, uh, our Fijian hooker, as well, just to double check. It took us five years to get Rocco Daguni right. This is, this is true. <laughs> so the Army in possession here. Um, and they are marginally ahead by seven points to five here at Whitney in the first of the inter-services clash as um, the RAF arguably had the better of the second half, but with fresh legs coming on, anything could happen. And we've seen this forward high ball used quite a lot, but safely ensconced there by the light blues. Um, and Army have won a penalty. No, I'm sorry, they're just coming the ball back, so it's an RAF. Yeah, it's amazing what a, the, penal, the difference the penalty count or, you know, a lesser penalty count in the second half has made. Yeah, just maybe it's chats from the coaches at half time potentially. Uh, just a bit of awareness of, of what the numbers are and j just leaving things alone. A lot of the time, if if there's no competition to break down, yeah. th there's no need to risk it depending on pitch location and, and what the other team are doing. So uh, I see the Army number eight coming back on, so they're back up to full strength now, um, which is going to make it even more interesting until we finish the game up. Jordan Miller is the um, army number eight, who has sin been for 10 minutes. Um, raw, signals, raw signals he is, and um, yeah, that will strengthen the army attack. Of course, they have been scored against since he went off, and that's sort of the way the game has worked out. 
two scores, one from the Army. They are seven up um, and against a, a try for the RAF. Both those scores have been made when there's been 14 men in the other side. Good clean RAF ball there. Uh, Lovely oh, take. Oh, unfortunate. Uh, and again, fingertip stuff now, yeah. but uh, be an Army scrum. Uh, unless they make the most of this advantage, of course. He's had a good game as well, um, at fullback there as well. Yeah, look, Bob, Bob's a really good lad. He was involved last season. Uh, multi talents can play in the back row uh, or within the backs. Uh, does a great backflip as well. Does Kat. he? Yeah. That's yeah. the sort of video we need. I think that's what gets hit. Well, this is the the, the PTI background, I think. <laughs> ah. But um, I do remember in Belgium, uh, after a, a few ales, he can he can still perform and do multiple flips, which was a real hit with uh, all the festival goers. <laughs> Right, that's a name to remember. Lewis Bovington, back flipper. It's the kind of content we love. So, the RAF kicking forward and um, to touch, and they will have a line out. Yeah, Army coming off their feet there and infringing, which has allowed the RAF into their own half. Um, so whether they back them all from this far out or we had clean ball last time, uh, there's options for them, hopefully, if they can uh, make the most of it. They have to keep this ball. Yeah, the light blues. Yeah, far back. And they've gone into them all. And yeah, they don't just need the movement that they had in the first half. That's better. Yeah, just patience. That's all they need. Just keep, just keep them going. Army, Army 10 thought that was a knock-on. Yeah, I think they thought it. I think yeah. it was just, just off his feet, to be honest. So they got away oh. with that one, but we had to kick it away. Uh, and again, just apply pressure on the Army to, to force an exit from here. Yeah, keep the lines really tight. Um, make, yeah, make them kick and uh, let's come back in field. So light blue ball. God, it just must be so hard to tackle in this as well. Just throw your body in the spokes, I think, Catherine, <laughs> in weather like this and see what happens. But that's a good break, good, good forward momentum. We found the gap through the middle there. So hopefully something can open up either side. Uh, light blue ball. Ooh, still got it. It's like an ice ring out there. It's ridiculous. Yeah, players just bouncing off in this mud, which has allowed the opportunity for the RAF to keep ball uh, and hopefully set something up. Oh, and then start, yeah. Yeah. I so say he's played advantage there, the ref for the knock on, as the army ended up in army hands, but he'll bring it back. Oh, it's just so frustrating. I think that's the difficulty with playing in these, these conditions yeah. of th those errors, what that will do to you uh, performance wise. And you just really need to, to reset the focus, not let it get to you uh, and go again. It's just the simple things suddenly become incredibly difficult because everything's so slippery. Uh, and again, that there is space out wide, but I think both teams know that the, op the opportunity and the difficulty of it getting there, um, just getting three or four passes together uh, with the, the weather is, is going to be really tough. Our director, Sarah, has just offered to do everyone's washing for them. So, uh, Sarah Bells, I'll hand out your address shortly. We'll have 30 muddy kits arriving at your door in, in the next few days. Quick turnaround as well, because 
you know, these these RAF boys have got to, got to be back out in a week. Josh Peacock doesn't even look like he's got kit on anymore. He just looks like he's been from mud, mud bath. Another prop change for the RAF, as you can see in the oh, clear, so off, clear yeah. blue. Yeah, Pe Peacock stayed on, uh, prop-wise, I think, so okay. some fresh legs in the front row. This is Ben Parrott who's come on. Bright blue kick. Good call by Ben Collins there, just to take the space on that tempo option, which is good to see. Brilliant hands there from the RAF. Yeah, look, oh, the, the army winger read that really, really well uh, and came up close down the space, because if he missed that tackle, then they were in that wide. RAF be absolutely desperate for a score because it does mean the difference between winning and losing here. I don't know what would have happened if we were, you know, if we drew. I don't think you do extra time at this level, but, um, you know, it's um, any score now would obviously give them the lead. Yeah, I think the referee's got, oh, we've got, oh, I'm not quite sure what the referee's called there. He's not gone with the advantage and something's kicked off on the far side. Handbags again. Yeah, it's tense out there, but um, RAF penalised, so the RAF here with the, um, sorry, the army with the advantage. I think he's speaking with his AR. You did signal that it was a penalty to the RAF earlier, so I'm not quite sure what the decision is, but I know the boys don't seem happy about it. <laughs> Well, we are in the closing minutes, really, of the second half of um, the RAF under-23 matchup between the Army and the RAF. But um, it's seven points to five in uh, the Army's favour. And the crowd have stuck around, so that's good. So the ref just having a word with his line judge there about what happened. Captain's being called forward. And we don't, I don't know if this is for the incident or for the afters, JC. Uh, I did hear some of the boys on the touchline saying that the, the army guy did the clothesline on the RAF players over the far side and, uh, and he produced a yellow card. Yeah. So uh, again, what in, in discipline upon the army. This second half, two yellow cards. Um, just have to wait and see if that'll cost them. Well, I mean, going on the format of the game so far, it has cost the other side once they've been down, but I don't want to put any undue pressure on the RAF, but if there's a time to score, guys, this is it. Yeah, it's in the RAF's hands now, really, to, to, to make the most of this advantage. They did do last time. They got a score and five points, uh, but again, it's going to be reliant on the set piece. No one's even thinking about going for goal in the, these conditions. That's a lovely kick to corner there for the light blues. I mean, is there any less pressure because it's under 23 or is it doesn't matter whether it's under 23, they're still playing for their service? Yeah, when you're involved at that level, it's, it's RAF against Army. Uh, the age piece is irrelevant uh, and it's a pure battle. So line out here for the light blues and they've been pretty strong at this in the second half and they are a man up now. They need a ball. Okay. Fresh ball being called for. You can only imagine, I don't know whether the other one's just too slippery, but a new ball being brought in here. Yeah, I can hear Jane Kemry at the uh, RAF on the 23s coach. Just tell him off, just keep the voice calm. They need that clarity and composure now towards the, uh, the final minutes of this game to try and get this score. So the Army at the moment with seven points, the RAF with five in the last few minutes and possibly one of the last plays of this game here at Whitney Rugby Club. Yeah, the army are prepped. They look like they're not going to compete and they're just going to try and hit this ball as right. much as they can. But 
I think we know where it's going. Not straight. Not straight. I don't no. think. It's given to the yeah, army. They love that because they know this is the last. They know how. Yeah. They reverse the penalty. Okay. <laughs> army in discipline from there. Wow. And the RAF, this is the best chance they've had so far as the wind absolutely hammers its way through Whitney here. And the RAF, of course, are a man up. They've won a penalty and they just need to keep this ball. The light blues would love a score right now. Uh, we've got a penalty and a free ball option here as well. They're just playing, going through the motions, going through the phases. They got number. Oh, Ooh, we lost the ball in the tackle, but still got light blue hands. And we're going back for the penalty. Okay, so it's still. Again, for me, th this is kickable. I think he's going to kick it. I don't blame him to go 8-7 yeah. uh, with that close to the post, regardless of the conditions. I'd expect someone to kick this. So, yeah, this will be um, Keir McDougall with a much simpler chance. And he had before. Um, confidence from the young man to take it um, for what could potentially be the last gasp of the um, or last play of the game. Yeah, with such a low scoring game with, with opportunities to take three points. Um, I don't blame him just to, just to get ourselves into the lead for the first time this match. So Kim McDougall for the light blues. And it's over. So it's 8-7 to the RAF. And this is as tight as it could be in these conditions. It is one point in it. The RAF, the light blues who haven't led all game are now up eight points to the army seven and the army reminder are still a man down yeah two minutes left i can hear the coaches calling so obviously everything can happen within that two minute period but it's going to be tough for the army to come back into this with a man down but hopefully the RAF keep their composure uh, exit well uh, and force the, the army to play and well done to Keir McDougall. I mean, it, it, like I said, in normal circumstances, that's an, that's an easy kick. But the pressure of the situation and the weather and the fact that he'd skewed the other kick he did, you know, by, by quite a way, amazing for him to so calmly take up and take that. Yeah, Keir's pretty level-headed like his brother was, to be honest. So uh, I'd have expected him to get that. Uh, and he's done well with it. Just direct straight through uh, just for that three points. Hopefully he wasn't taking too much of that pressure on board and, and thinking about that too much just focusing on this kicking process some worried faces here in in the army lineup as they uh, as they take to the field for the last few minutes of this game last couple of minutes we're led to believe i'm afraid i don't have a clock in front of me but um you know the army know they can do it they've um, kept the RAF at bay for for the majority of this match so just need to stick with it yeah, it gets difficult uh, with two minutes to go, uh, whether you try and kick the ball away, play for territory, whether you, you pick and go for two minutes. Uh, I know the, the, my first involvement with the RAF Senior 15 when uh, being the Army, uh, RAF Holton, I think we picked and go for about three and a half, four minutes. And from a coaching side of it, it's the longest three and a half, four yeah. minutes of your life. So I'm sure coaches on both sides will be feeling that now. But they need to score. You know, they don't, they don't have the option to sort of just play through the phases do they they yeah. actually need to score no the army have really got to go for it now and, and throw it around whether they just stick to their pick and go game they, they try and release some of these wingers that they've got and, and, and utilize that space but hopefully they throw everything at it now well the the problem seems to be now is finding a ball that they can play with um i i think um that seems to be the issue because no one wants a game decided on uh <laughs> and now all the coaches are just shouting keep warm so every little play, every little player every player um on the pitch we've got a brand new spanking white rugby ball come on so uh yeah yeah it looks like the the fourth official wants to retrieve that so the ball boys have packed in the weather's too bad for them uh, <laughs> and we lost them by the look of it they just couldn't clean the balls quick enough i don't blame them to be honest <laughs> All right, so the ball is in army possession. Just to be clear, they need to score. It is 8-7 to the RAF, to the Light Blues, in this first inter-services match of the Under-23 Championship.
The Army are reigning champions and they are on the brink of defeat here against the RAF. Some strong army carries now as they start building towards uh, closer to the, the RAF posts. So the RAF will really need to maintain their composure, not concede any penalties like we did in the first half and, and try and uh, force an error from the army side. And the beauty of rugby, of course, is they can play as long as they keep the ball in play. Yeah, they'll try and go multi-phase the army just to try and work their way up the pitch. But we've seen before getting more than four or five phases without an error uh, due to the conditions is going to prove tricky. The army just want to keep the ball in possession. The RAF's defences now will be cool and like they haven't been this entire match. They've been strong. They just need to keep it that way. There is a swimming pool out there, an ice rink, a swimming pool, whatever conditions you want to think of it. And they have played a massive part in the game. The RAF are kicking it off. And that, no, but the wind has kept it in. No, but it's off. And that is a win. No, the, they've called it. It's a win for the RAF here. They win in the dying minutes of the game. The army are defeated. 8-7 to the RAF under 23s. Who would have thought it? Two yellow cards for the Reds being, being the deciding factor really in this. And um, JC, I know you don't want to be wearing your light blue hat this evening but that was very well deserved they made them made the most of you know a, a, a yellow two yellow cards against them yeah looking at the first half with the uh, the infringements and the, the penalty accounts the, against the RAF but we saw they had the upper hand at scrum time uh, especially when, once the mall started functioning and set piece went well uh, I'm just really happy for everyone involved with the under 23s it's, it's been a long time coming I'm, I'm not sure the last time that the RAF under 23s beat the army under 23s uh, but I, I know it was many moons ago to be honest well I know that they came close last year I keep repeating I think it was 31-28 in the last play of the game to the army so it's almost you know deserving from, from where we were last year and it's brilliant to see games like that because it means that all three you know all three games all three teams are well matched and that's what people want to see yeah it's, it's great that's, that's all you want is all three services to be competitive games and luckily that they have been for a good couple of years now at under 23 level uh, at, at senior 15 level as well so um, it's really good to see um, and then the, the Navy, uh, we'll see where they are. But I know they've had some really good results against Cornwall under-20s and the uh, uh, Exeter Chiefs, the, the average team with a couple of guys that I work with in Cornwall playing uh, against them as well. So, um, yeah, it'll be good to see what's up next week. Well, listen, Justin Coleman, thank you so much for joining us in terrible conditions. I think you've got the worst gantry out of the three. Um, to those of you who are watching here tonight, I hope you've enjoyed it um, in the absolute peeing rain here at Whitney. Apart from that, a fantastic rugby club, and it's a fantastic result for the RAF under-23s. Eight points to the Army's seven. But if you've enjoyed this, please do join us in the next two weeks. We're in Havant next week, where the RAF will play the Navy, and then in Aldershot um, in two weeks' time, in, uh, where the Army will take on the RAF in a repeat of last year's stunning finale. Um, sorry, the Navy will play the Army me in um in all the shots i'm going to call off now because the rain has got too much our cameramen are soaked through and uh, we hope you've enjoyed it whether you've watched on youtube on facebook or on bfbs please do join us again a reminder the raf under 23 in the first game of the inter services 2022 have beaten the army eight points to seven good night <laughs>